Good morning, and how are you doing today? Hope you're all well. I'm busy making some rosehip wine, and I thought it's about time I did a taste test of the poor man's brandy recipe that's been handed down from a few generations of people to other people, not my people, no relation to me at all, but it's a recipe that's been handed down, and I've been waiting eagerly to do a taste test and find out what it's like. So I've poured myself a glass just to sample. I'm going to lay the rest down for about another eight months or so. But I just wanted to have a test and see how it might turn out after a bit more time aging and maturing. I am really impressed with that colour. It's golden, it's bright. It's quite leggy as well, which is awesome. And aroma-wise, you get an apple and brown sugar, like toffee apple, merging together backed up by that hint of alcohol, that strength, that warmth coming through. And seeing as this contains apples and potatoes and that wheat as well, it all adds to this complicated aroma, this richness that hits the nose. And I can see why it's called brandy, poor man's brandy, with that applish on the nose and that wheat warmth. Let's dive in to the taste and see how it is. That's unusual, that's different, it's, it doesn't taste like a wine that I would personally opt for. Because initially when you take that first sip, you don't get any depth or flavour hitting your tongue initially. It's very light, that first sip, makes you want to lug a bit more to get some more flavour coming in. First second, that first moment is a bit disappointing. You're like, what am I drinking? Where is the flavour? So you drink a bit more, have a bigger sip, and then it hits you. This full-on warming, wheaty, apple-potato combination with that brown sugar, that toffee explosion, hits the back of the throat. And that's emphasised with that alcohol warmth, because it's a strong wine, this is. It's about 17 and to 18%, so it really, really has that warmth from the alcohol. But the wheat and apple and potato backs it up really well. It's a semi-sweet, drying of the mouth, but has that little bit of, has that little bit of pretentious back sweetness to it. I just can't tell if it's a sweet wine or a dry wine. It just was brandy-like, really. It's really, really is brandy-like. The test of all my wines is, does the missus like it? It is not my favourite, but it's not bad either. really like the elderflower and the rose petal. Is it wine? Sherry? Wine. Yeah, rose petal. Wines, yes. Yeah. Those are really lovely. And the sherry. What is the sherry made of? Apricots. Apricot sherry, yes, that was my favourite this season, so more of that please! Coming up! So it's not Dee's favourite, and I don't think it is really my favourite. It's not one I would put up the wine rack and be most proud of. It might be eight months down the line when it's had more time to mature and form and come into its own, but initially it's one I'm just going to finish this bottle, tuck aside and forget about. Not one on the top of my drinking list that is so good right now. Drink it whilst it's fantastic. So anyway, I want to know, have you made the poor man's brandy? And what do you think of it? It could be amazing down the line. So I will be doing another taste test and review next year sometime. So why don't you subscribe and join me for more wine taste tests, homebrew recipes and sherry drink everything homebrew related. I'll see you all soon. Have fun now.